Sorry, yeah. Sometimes you discover something in a movie so shocking you end up... No! Well, fortunately, I can edit that part out using Femora 11. One of the easiest editors Femora. I've ever used. Yeah, this is a good editor. That's a really good editor for starting out. Part two. Check out the link in the description down below and try Femora today completely free. Avengers Endgame. Avengers Endgame is a movie that superhero fans need no introduction. Nor moviegoers in general seen as the oh my god film broke the record at the time for the highest grossing movie ever. Ultimately being the second highest grossing movie of all time. As its title I wonder what the next the highest gross grossing movie is. Marvel Cinematic Universe be? Avengers movie with years of films leading up to the movie's dramatic inclusion. In addition to being the third most expensive movie ever made. Considering the three hour epic's ambitious and all encompassing nature. It only makes sense sibling directors Anthony and Joe Russo have gone on record twice saying the film has a number of easter eggs that remain to be found. What those easter eggs are and where they remain to be found is an ongoing mystery, as nothing has been confirmed since they've said this. And curiously, in the hunt for these eggs, viewers made an especially odd discovery once the movie dropped its Blu-ray after its extended theater run, as at one point in the film, Iron Man and Captain America travel back in time to 1970 to a military research base where Captain America briefly catches a look at the love of his life, Peggy, from the other side of an office window. It's a memorable moment despite there being no discernible dialogue as Steve Rogers aka Captain America stares at Peggy like a weirdo from afar as she fails to recognize him literally less than one foot away. Interesting. I wondering how she didn't see him through that window. Music impossible for viewers to know what's being said in this moment. See the FW86 on Reddit noticed on the Blu-ray. When turning on the movie's subtitles, it surprisingly reveals a secret piece of dialogue that isn't audible in the movie. They're trying man but Braddock's unit has been stopped by lightning strikes. I'll look at the weather projections. It's not lightning strikes we're looking at. The hidden dialogue which can only be revealed through the Blu-ray subtitles opens up a number of interesting questions. As the discussion of lightning strikes that aren't actually lightning begs the question of what exactly they're referring to. Many believe it may be a reference to Storm mm -hmm. and X-Men somehow making some sort of off-screen appearance. There's also the question of the reference to someone named Braddock, who fans speculate is a reference to Marvel character Captain Britain, being his actual name is Brian Braddock. Although the character has yet to appear in a Marvel movie, and it's unclear if the Braddock they're talking about is the man himself or perhaps someone related to the character. Seeing as Tony Stark, aka Iron Man, accidentally runs into his own father in the same sequence. The whole reveal also poses an interesting question about the time travel sequence in general. Although Tony Stark and Steve Rogers' objective for traveling back in time was always to obtain a space stone and pin particles, why Tony Stark chose to, that to travel to the 1970, a few months before his own birth, is never actually made clear in the movie and has been the subject of debate among fans. Excuse me. 970. Are you sure? Captain. This new piece of the puzzle has made many believe whatever's happening in the scene is possibly the reason for Tony Stark's choice of this particular date. What exactly the meaning of the scene is and all of its implications are still a mystery. And whether or not this mystery was the final secret to be found, or if it barely even cracks the surface of possibly hundreds of Easter eggs we still don't know about. At this point are questions that only the Russo brothers know the answer to. Stuck on you. I'm never gonna find it. For submitting this mystery on the on There's a lot of stuck stuff on packed into one segment. Matt Damon, Greg Kinnear about conjoined twins Walt and Bob, who for some reason are fraternal, even though only identical twins can become conjoined. However, that's not the mystery we're gonna be looking at. Instead, we're gonna be looking what? at something lurking in the background is... right when the film begins. In this scene, when Walt and Bob are shown waking up and getting out of bed, when the camera cuts down to their feet, if you look very closely, you can see a person's face peeking through the shadows underneath the bed, tilted slightly uh. to the side looking rather sinister. So much oh. so that the first time viewers manage to see this thing as soon as the movie began, they get the impression that it's a horror film. Interestingly, I couldn't find any official source from the film make any sort of comment about this online. So I bought the DVD to listen to the director's commentary with sibling directors the Farley Brothers, and was surprised that they acknowledged the face right at the beginning, saying they only noticed it after initial production of the movie was finished and had no idea they, why they it was knew, there. They knew why it was there. Shot coming up, you gotta know about. Under the bed here, you gotta check this out. This blew our minds. Someone pointed out in post production. It's like an image of a like a man's face. Under there. It appears to be a man's face. <laughs> They're lying. I don't know whether it's just the light hitting like a you know some. It's, it's like you can see between the legs there. It's it could be. We don't know what it is. Like Hideous. It, someone said there were like uh, baseball bats under there. Or baseball like bat. Bag. Dust lighting. I don't. I don't know what. It's an odd thing. The Farley suggests Come that on. it may be sporting equipment, which does make sense if you buy your sporting gear from hell. But after looking at that so face. many times on repeat, there is no question to me that that's, that's a face. face. What also appears to be an unsubstantiated crazy. fact submitted on IMDb claims that the face is the executive producer of the movie hiding under the bed. But IMDb trivia tends to be pretty unreliable, as anybody can submit anything, and I personally couldn't verify this anywhere. But if that is a person under there, 
there, they're a master of not blinking or moving a hair. That said, the idea that it's just a prank on set by one of the producers <laughs> was certainly plausible. Considering the Farley brothers were well known in Hollywood for their elaborate ruses on set of Dumb and Dumber, Shallow How, and There's Something About Mary. In fact, one notorious gag where the brothers would trick actors and crew into seeing Peter Farley's Little Peter, huh? the award-winning director in Hot Water a few years back. While seeing this creepy face is certainly a horrifying discovery that no one That's has ever expected. Absolutely. Nobody wants to see that. It no longer seems like the most horrifying thing that could have shown up under the bed. Airbud. Airbud is a 1997 Disney film about a sad boy who finds friendship in a basketball playing dog. That's about all there is to it. A film any kid who grew up watching Disney Channel remembers always being on, spawning over a dozen sequels and spinoffs that somehow managed to get progressively worse, as the dog somehow managed to get progressively more talented. Oh, Despite the ridiculous premise, Airbud. Wasn't there like a big controversy between. Like the Airbud last film that you expect to find shocking discovery. Yet. That didn't stop college friends Lee Metzger and Josh Kramer. Like the dogs were being abused or killed. They, and they got sick. Watching Airbud in 2017, which can now be viewed better than ever due to its availability on streaming services. Metzger and Kramer said they already had a habit of pausing movie screens when newspaper clippings and other texts appeared on screen to look for Easter eggs, and did so in Airbud when a newspaper obituary for the main character's deceased father, a pilot, was briefly shown on screen. And to their surprise, they found that the newspaper clipping read. Captain Fram is best known for being the only man to break the sound barrier with a banana and a long sports sock. <laughs> Put that image together in your head, a banana and a long sports sock is not exactly a wholesome Disney reference. It continues onward. His father, Luther Fram, was the daring pilot who during the Second World War flew in Haman Bibles to Muslim prisoners in Berlin. Which is a rather huh? surprising anti-Muslim message hidden in Airbud. Seeing what as the? Muslims don't eat pork for religious reasons, nor would they appreciate a Bible being thrown at them. Metzger and Kramer couldn't find any record of any other viewer catching this small detail. Directors? Movie, making them the first Producers? Hidden deeply inappropriate Easter egg for a children's movie about a slam dunking dog. 20 what years the? after the film's release. To their surprise, it wasn't even the last time the newspaper was used, as the same clipping showed up around the 17 minute mark in the masterful sequel, Air Bud, Golden Receiver. Get it? He plays football in that one. Mel Magazine reached out to the film's prop master, set dresser, and screenwriter about the discovery, who all said they didn't know about the shocking news beforehand, nor could recall who wrote and designed the obituary prop. Come on, you know. The obituary reads Raul Inglis, the assistant to the film's director, but crew members' names are commonly used as small details in movies and Inglis says he doesn't recall writing the obituary, stating that it might have been a group effort. Though, considering the group effort, of the message, the mystery of who exactly was responsible for the offensive lines may be forever a mystery. As I highly doubt anyone wants to take responsibility for that one publicly. One thing's for sure, it definitely doesn't help a movie that didn't need to get any worse. But if anyone does feel like going through every frame of the movie to look for more hidden messages, don't be surprised if you lose all respect for this guy by the end Milk. of the film. Mars Needs Mobs. Thanks to Yeah, I don't know for submitting this to the on This is CGI movie. Mars movies. Needs Moms is a 2011 this movie was weird. animated nightmare of a movie and one of Disney's biggest flops to date. And a hard to watch <laughs> return to the horrifying Polar Express animation that nobody asked for. That ended up losing the studio over a hundred million dollars. Oh, the film follows man. a nine year old boy Milo who takes his mother for granted. But guess what? Mars Needs Moms. And now he has to save her. The film is largely forgotten, except for the fact that Milo was originally played by Seth Green. Before Disney thought his voice sounded too old for the role and re-recorded Miles' lines with an actual child actor at the last minute before the film was released. And honestly, they weren't wrong. Mom, no one likes zombies. They're an abomination. <laughs> I'm going to do their annihilation. However, since Seth Green also provided the motion capture... Sounds like one of the robot the chicken cats. On his his That's what I always think when I hear his voice. I know he makes the show. Then in 2018, while reviewing the film, YouTuber Rebel Taxi began the call for the release of the earlier version of the film with Green's voice acting with the hashtag release the Seth Green cut. In reference to the fans who called for the release of the Justice League cut that was first director Zack Snyder's original vision for the film, which released the Snyder cut, as he quit before the final cut was released due to disputes and left the final cut up to Joss Whedon. The Snyder cut eventually was released on HBO Max in 2021, unlike the Seth Green cut that Disney never released. Or so everyone thought, as YouTuber Cinephile Studios revealed that he did have the Seth Green cut and the way he obtained it was right under everyone's nose the whole time. I as know, two years Ray. prior, he filmed a review of Mars Needs Mobs and ripped an MP4 file he believed was the movie from the Blu-ray to use as visuals to play during his video. Yet when he played the MP4 to edit his review, he heard Seth Green's voice. He didn't think much about it at the time and assumed it was an option on the disc. And 
ripped the correct video file for his review, not realizing he was actually looking at the lost media the internet was dying to see for years, until he saw the calls to release the Seth Green cut <laughs> circulate online. The Seth Green cut apparently I laid did not discovery the for nearly a decade, probably because no one actually was trying to watch it, but also because it isn't a selectable option on any of the menus or normally accessible in any known way. It was noticed in the director commentary mode which syncs live action footage to the movie. You can't actually hear what sounds like the original audio in the background. However, ripping the Blu-ray myself, the commentary track already has the background audio in it, whereas the Seth Green audio is a completely separate audio track that appears to go unused. No idea why this is here, but it looks like release the Seth Green cut was rather pointless, considering Disney actually had released it. It's just no one expected the only way to watch it was to data mine it from the disc. Again, not it's not like it's gonna change the movie though. Beast Wars. Oh, I remember. I remember. Thanks to Shia Louis for submitting this in a comment to my first I movie remember. discovery video. And the YouTube archive for submitting it on oddheader.com. Beast Wars Transformers is a computer animated TV series that ran from 1996 to 1999, which is set 300 years after the events of the original Transformers TV series. Beast Wars seems to be largely forgotten, although its production designer Clyde Cotts did win an Emmy for Outstanding Achievement Animation for work on the show. Interestingly, hey. on a DVD collection of Beast Wars second season lies an interesting discovery that I'm not sure how the hell it has anything to do with Transformers, as by using a player like VLC where you can explore the disc by title, which isn't something you can do using the normal DVD menus. By playing the video track labeled Titled 2, you can find, what the, what the? a 1957 marionette show pilot called Here's Irving by TV legend Sid and Marty Croft. The video has no sound and looks really creepy when viewed without the cheery music and dialogue the pilot would normally have. Interestingly, Here's Irving never aired on TV and was only ever released as a special feature on a DVD box set of the Croft show H.R. Puff and Stuff, a short-lived 1969 TV series featuring a boy and his magic flute on an island governed that by a friendly creepy, dragon where everything man. is a life-size talking puppet. How here is Irving made his way onto the Beast Wars DVD? Who can even say? Possibly someone on the team was a fan of the cross work and wanted to honor them with an Easter egg. Unlike he's trying to scare people, he's not a fan. Himself in the Transformers universe. And that's not something I can handle. Jeez. And I thought Decepticons were creepy. The Rescuers. <laughs> Thanks to CyberJazz for submitting this discovery in the comments of my previous movie Secrets video. The Rescuers is a 1977 Disney film about Bernard and Bianca, two mice agents of an international aid society on a mission to rescue an abducted orphan girl named Penny, a movie that was a childhood staple for many generations as it was released on VHS in 1992 and then again in 1999. The 1999 VHS release particularly remembered for a rather infamous secret, as it was recalled only three days after its release because in this scene where Bernard and Bianca take off from the runway with Orville and nose dive into the streets. If you were to pause at just the right time, an image of a topless woman can be seen oh, yeah, I remember. one of the windows in the background. <laughs> Hello. The image remains on screen for about two frames, but is easy to miss if you're only paying attention to the cute mice. Which hopefully that oh, I saw it. I saw it. During the scene, considering Disney distributed over three million copies of the VHS before recalling. Three Whoops. mil. Some of you may be wondering if someone working on the Rescuers 1999 VHS reissue was inspired by whoever put that in got sued to oblivion. Bike Club, which came out the same year. As Tyler Durden does something very similar in the movie as a film projectionist. However, the January 99 re-release of the Rescuers VHS actually predates Bike Club's October release by a few months. Apparently, the explanation given by Disney was that for the 1999 VHS release, they accidentally grabbed the wrong version of the film, which was the reason the image didn't appear on the earlier 1992 VHS release. As evidently, the 99 tape used a version of the movie they had seen in the archives they didn't realize had one tiny little difference. Makes me think this probably wasn't the first or the last time that Disney messed up this badly. Now, if you excuse me, I'll be revisiting my old VHS collection to see what else Disney might be hiding. Jesus. Guardians of the Galaxy. 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy was a game I don't know what this one's going to be, though. Largely influencing later titles like Infinity War and Endgame by introducing an expansively detailed sci-fi adventure unlike any before. Following an offbeat cast of misfits, an adventure that strings together multiple elaborate settings across the galaxy. Because of this, it's easy to believe director James Gunn's claim there's an Easter egg that remains in the film that's still unsolved to this day. Through the years, some fans have cast a doubt on there being any egg at all, believing it to be the ultimate troll, prompting Gunn to even say to one fan he would give them a hundred thousand dollars if there was an unsolved make it 200 in the film. make it 200,000 gun was referring to all along appears to be something previously discovered that was never properly solved throughout the film when the movie jumps to different locations throughout the course of the adventure different coordinates display on the screen which some hardcore fans have already figured out are actually ciphers hide secret messages for example at the kiln space prison the cipher suspiciously says this isn't real it's still unknown if every coordinate holds ciphers and gun has confirmed very few of the messages on twitter 
One YouTuber in particular, Master Team, has spent a large amount of dedication trying to string all the known messages together and believe he found an overarching message in the scenes of possible clues about Star-Lord's mother. That when translated said, shh, this is mom's cancer, Meredith Quill X. And while Meredith huh? Quill is the name of the protagonist, Star-Lord's mother, you may have noticed this makes no sense. It seemed further confirmed this message was the unsolved final piece of the puzzle when Gunn was asked about the final Easter egg and said a particular YouTuber had partially discovered the egg and that they knew who partially. they were. From here, Master Team had noticed that his original solution for Meredith Quill X seemed a little weak and worked up a different solution that gave him Meredith Quill BD, which didn't really seem to make any more BD. sense. Master Team had thought about this for weeks and finally concluded that BD had to stand for Baby Daddy, assuming <laughs> this was a hint foreshadowing Star-Lord's father's appearance in the sequel. Gunn was asked if this was the final Easter egg responded that Master Tainment's theory was not completely wrong, but not completely true. Oh, One YouTuber even made the theory that he's the close, he's close. completely recontextualized the movie. As the line, this is not real, could suggest the protagonist's mother is a being who's controlling his reality. Gunn cryptically retweeted the video saying, amazing work. Clarifying he may be onto something, but it was still not the full final secret he was talking about. It's still unclear from the solid message so far what exactly is correct or what this is trying to say for sure. As it remains to be seen if the message can even be properly solved or if Gunn owes someone $100,000. I can say with certainty though that BD standing for baby daddy is very likely the wrong part that James Gunn was referring to. In the hunt for these mysteries, we might just need Booty some demon. editing tools. So why not check out Femora 11? Femora 11 is the perfect editor if you're just starting That's to... That's a good editor. ...complete solutions to allow you to print Box and Miss Arctic Fox... That's a good video. I like this guy's videos. Riley S. 